A lot of patients with chronic illnesses like long COVID or ME-CFS are very excited about a treatment that should be available within a couple of years. That treatment is called Berlin Cures 007. Yes, that is a reference to James Bond. But that's because this could be a real game-changing treatment for patients with these conditions. It is capable of completely neutralizing the autoimmune component of these conditions, something that could profoundly improve quality of life or better than that, after just a single infusion. I'm going to tell you all about Berlin Cures and what we know so far in this video. But first, if you are new to this channel, my name is Patrick Usher and I'm an ME-CFS patient. This is a place where I aim to provide simplified explanations of the research into long COVID, ME-CFS and related conditions so that you can be more empowered into understanding this condition better. It's also a place where I aim to share the various treatment strategies that I have tried in order to improve my condition. If that sounds good to you, please do like and subscribe. Now, I have been talking a lot about autoimmunity on this channel recently. I've done videos talking about the nature of autoimmunity in ME-CFS and long COVID, how it revolves around these little functional autoantibodies that are not damaging the body, but which are blocking its um, blocking various core physiological processes. For example, they can limit the perfusion of blood into the muscles, thereby creating exercise intolerance, or the perfusion of blood into the brain, thereby creating cognitive issues like brain fog and memory problem. I have also talked about a treatment that is currently available in Germany called immunoabsorption, which is a very expensive and rather involved blood washing procedure. It costs 12,500 euro for the five necessary treatments and it involves filtering your blood through a filter in order to remove the autoantibodies. And apart from that, there isn't really any mainstream conventional treatment that at the moment is aimed at dealing with this kind of autoimmune problem. And this is where Berlin Cures 007 comes in, because the people who are behind Berlin Cures have actually been involved in researching functional autoantibodies for two decades. They're very familiar with them. And the aim of Berlin Cures is to find a therapeutic equivalent to immunoabsorption, but one which is actually uh, safer, more effective, more cost effective and which only requires one or two treatments. So how does Berlin Cures actually work? Well, it's not a blood washing procedure. It is a drug. It is an infusion. And to the best of my knowledge, it is an infusion that lasts just 90 minutes and most people might only need one of them. And the class of drug it belongs to is known as an aptamer. And so an aptamer drug actually involves a DNA or an RNA molecule. In the case of Berlin Curis, it is a DNA molecule. It involves infusing a DNA molecule into someone's body, and that DNA molecule is capable of targeting a specific uh, molecule or a range of molecules in the body, binding to them and neutralizing their effect. Okay, so we have an infusion. It's got this DNA molecule. It's capable of going in and binding to other specific molecules and stopping their activity. So in this case, the particular drug, the particular DNA molecules, would be capable of targeting very precisely the autoantibodies that are involved in creating the autoimmune problems in ME-CFS. So this is real precision medicine, extremely targeted and has an advantage therefore over something like immunoabsorption which although it's considered a pretty safe procedure can wash out things that are not very helpful to wash out like uh, substances from the blood like albumin or fibrinogen or different electrolytes or platelets and this kind of thing so in contrast to that berlin cures is able to be extremely targeted it's only going to get the autoantibodies that are causing the problem autoantibodies against beta 1 receptors which cause issues with the heart pumping, autoantibodies against beta-2 receptors, which cause problems with blood perfusion into the muscles or brain, autoantibodies against antimuscarinic 3 receptors, which cause problems with the release of hormones from all the different endocrine glands, as well as the release of moisture from all the exocrine glands, things like sweat and mucus. So it will be able to target things very precisely. So another very helpful way to think about Berlin Cures is it is kind of like a cocktail of synthetic antibodies. Now, when someone is ill, their body creates antibodies against whatever it is that's causing the illness. But also, of course, this happens in autoimmunity. So in this case, uh, the autoantibodies, the functional autoantibodies are the problem. The Berlin cures 
uh, would be like uh, antibodies against the functional autoantibodies, except they're synthetic. So they're coming in and actually stopping the activity of the functional autoantibody. Now, when we hear of a technology like this, when we consider that the problem with functional autoantibodies is a significant aspect of the pathophysiology of ME-CFS and long COVID, and obviously it's not the the whole aspect at all. There are so many things going wrong in these illnesses, but it is a sizable part of the problem. If you had a treatment that could actually essentially remove that problem overnight, it would make sense that people's quality of life would dramatically improve and very quickly. And it also raises the question whether it could even lead to a cure, because although the autoantibodies are not the root cause of these conditions, as I said, they do create a lot of mischief. They are doing, they are causing a lot of problems. If you had a drug that could actually uh, neutralize them overnight, that would allow the body to operate a lot better. It would be relieved of a major burden and very quickly. And if it can be relieved of a major burden, it is hypothetically possible that even though there are still other problems going on, the body may feel so much better, so much um, be, be unburdened so much that it might be able to put its resources into healing the remaining problems more effectively. Because what we have in illnesses like ME-CFS is we have a lot of burdens. We have things like low blood volume, not having enough blood. I've done a video about that. We have things like microclots, which make the blood sluggish and thick. I've done a video about that as well. We have autonomic dysfunction. We have mitochondrial issues, problems at the very cellular level causing uh, issues with energy creation in the muscles and so on. But if you can have something that actually takes a major burden off the body, it will then be better able to deal with everything else. We know that some people do recover from ME-CFS. And so, uh, you know, even though they are in a minority at this time, it is obviously possible. My feeling is the reason that most people don't is because they have too many burdens. And therefore, if we can deburden the body, it's far more likely that someone might actually recover. But even if such a treatment does not lead to recovery, if it can improve someone's quality of life from being housebound to being able to engage more in life again, or from being able to walk 10 minutes to being able to walk 30 minutes, or to be able to engage in part-time work again, this is all well and good in my book. And so what we know actually, uh, having said all of that, is that uh, an early use of Berlin Cures into four patients with long COVID actually showed that all four patients recovered after a single infusion of the drug, which is really quite extraordinary. Let me read you a testimonial from one of those four patients. So this is from an article and the article will be down below and in that article you can actually read of the other patients as well and their, and their equally impressive experience. So this says, at the end of July, a 51-year-old man received his first infusion of Berlin Cures 007. The very day after receiving the medicine, his brain fog lifted and his muscles stopped twitching as much as before. On day two, his tremor disappeared. Over the course of the first week, his balance, fatigue, coordination and memory all improved. He now says, this is a few months later, my physical, cognitive and mental abilities have all returned. I have stopped lounging around and capable of doing anything else. I can think clearly again. I am emotionally stable and able to feel happy again. So that is an amazing response. As anyone you know, with these sorts of illnesses uh, knows the idea that a simple and, and single infusion could lead to that level of improvement uh, is simply um, hard to believe, actually. So it's very, very encouraging. Now, at the moment, where is Berlin Cures at? So they've done... Uh, a phase 2a trial actually interestingly not in long covid but in heart failure patients because patients with heart failure also have problems with functional autoantibodies and particular uh, beta 1 autoantibodies which reduce heart pumping capacity now that study went very well showing that it improved the ejection fraction or the pumping capacity of those heart failure patients and there were no adverse events of note at the moment there is a big trial going on across Europe. Several different countries are involved, several different medical centers, and they are studying 114 long COVID patients with this drug. The results are expected this autumn, this fall, uh, in the year 2024. And uh, at that point, we will have a much clearer indication of just how powerful or not this drug could be, how much of a game-changing drug it could be. I believe it will be. So then we'll get those results. What happens at that point? Well, then it needs to go to a phase three trial. Um, and if it passes that, then it goes to regulatory approval. Now, this will be, therefore, the first time we'll have had a drug for an illness like long COVID, 
which will actually have met regulatory approval, in this case in Germany. Uh, there is simply no other drug that has had regulatory approval before for these sorts of conditions. In case you haven't noticed, we tend to be neglected. Now, what this means is that if someone has private health insurance um, and they have long COVID, they should be able to get the cost of the treatment reimbursed. It may even mean that it will be offered through the state healthcare system in Germany. And of course, if it can be offered there, it may spread to other health jurisdictions. Now, where does this leave someone like myself who doesn't have long COVID, but who has ME-CFS? Now, I find it very frustrating that there is this tendency to regard long COVID as different somehow from ME-CFS. And that is a whole other topic that one could delve into some other time and the problems with that. They are essentially the same condition. But where it leaves someone like me is that unfortunately you probably wouldn't be able to get it covered under health insurance or through a health system and you'd have to pay for it off label. Now we don't know how much burning Curious 007 is going to cost but I would imagine if it's just a question of one treatment it should be an awful lot less than the five treatments at two and a half thousand euro each that is required for immunoabsorption. I would still expect it to cost in the thousands but I imagine that with just one infusion, it should be more manageable as a prospect. The other thing, of course, is if you are an ME-CFS patient and you happen to catch COVID, you could um, tell your doctor that you're feeling awfully worse and please classify you as a long COVID patient right now, okay? <laughs> All right, anyway, never mind. Facetiousness aside, um, this is a very promising drug. I'm very excited about it. A lot of people are very excited about it. I myself actually tested positive for the autoantibodies associated with ME-CFS. I did a video about my test results which is linked above right now and where you can uh, learn about uh, how I went about testing uh, for these because you can, no matter where you live in the world, if you're happy to get a FedEx and you have a lab that uh, is happy to take the bloods for you, you can post these off to Germany and get your results. So ultimately, I'm very optimistic about this treatment. Of course, one has to be cautious. As I said, it's just dealing with one component of the illness, uh, but anything that can help improve the quality of life is a good thing, I think. And if it might lead to encouraging something else better than that, that's even better. The main thing is we need to know that there's no risk of major adverse effects. And with a study of 114 patients, we will have a much clearer idea about that. So I think it's something to be optimistic about. It's something to look forward to. It's something to save for. And um, yeah, I, uh, I have high hopes for this treatment. This is what we need. We need conventional treatments that are able to move the needle for patients with these sorts of conditions so they are not just left uh, to their own devices and basically having to get better through the most tortured and boring efforts at pacing. Okay, so that's it. Let me know what you think about Berlin Cures. Um, do you think it's a good development, a negative development? Uh, you're, you're skeptical, whatever it might be, leave your thoughts down below. Uh, if people want to learn more about me, uh, they can head over to my website. I've written a couple of books, one about POTS, one about thirst and MECFS, long COVID and why I believe it's been historically misdiagnosed as psychogenic water drinking. And I also offer a consultation service, the details of which are available on the website. 